why people really leave Islam. There's a lot of confusion as to just why people leave religious groups, and especially what leads ex-Muslims out of the faith. It's not, for example, abusive parents, or cultural alienation, or even hating God. So what are the main reasons people leave Islam? Conflicts between Islam and science. Yes, it's that simple. Unsurprisingly, religious incompatibility with observable reality and the scientific method is a common beeline into questioning and eventually leaving faith. And the more I learned of science, you know, just basic high school science, nothing spectacular, you know, and learning about evolution, learning about physics, learning about chemistry, that made sense to me and religion didn't. So much of it was just like, like, believe in it because, like, we said you should believe in it and it says in the book that it's right because the book says it's right. This is even less surprising when we consider that ex-Muslims were about three times more likely than the general population to have a STEM degree in XMNA's apostate report. Of the respondents in the apostate report, 28% reported conflict between Islam and the scientific view of the natural world as the most important factor in their apostasy while for 65% it was a contributing factor. So if one aspect of this self-proclaimed perfect religion is flawed, then what does it say about everything else? Logical and scriptural contradictions. People who leave Islam aren't the ones who know the least about it. In fact, it's often the most inquisitive about the religion who do so sometimes after very deliberate study. So I remember thinking about, uh, well, where did God come from? If you don't need anything for God to exist, then why do we need God for the universe to exist? And I remember asking mom that, and she said, uh, thinking about stuff like that is fitna because it gives uh, a chance for the shaitan, for the devil to kind of... Uh, play with your head. Yeah, play with your head. And in XMNA's apostate report, respondents were asked about their reasons for leaving the faith. When asked about the logical problems with Islamic doctrines and teachings, nearly one in five called these concerns the most important factor in their apostasy, and just over two-thirds called them a contributing factor. It took me a long time to finally accept my apostasy around 14, 15, and I started really questioning the metaphysics of all, all of it, and it really didn't make any sense. Before they make the difficult choice to leave, ex-Muslims first double down into more rigorous theological study more often than not, in search of something they might have missed. I decided, you know what, I'm gonna be more religious. I'm going to read the Qur'an from start to finish, and this time I'm going to read it, and I'm going to look really deeply in it. Perhaps they think the flaws lie not in the texts, but in their incomplete understanding. But the more they read, the less sense things seem to make. He, he told me all the historical inaccuracies, and that really sort of, uh, you know, as it, you know, you question certain things and, you know, you sort of uh, explain it by saying, oh, it's a text written at that time, this, that, but no one ever, I said, asked me those kind of questions that made me realize that when they are, it's inaccurate, it's just wrong, this is not when this happened. So then I thought, you know, that whole idea of it being untouchable, the Quran, right, you know, that sort of shattered. And after that, it was just like no going back, really, you know, you can't just sort of believe again. Three quarters of respondents in the apostate report shared that it was realizing internal contradictions in Islamic scripture that factored most heavily into their decision to leave. Those who know Islam the most are those most convinced of its falsehood. Conflicts between Islam and human rights. To be clear, being a religious person and supporting human rights are not mutually exclusive. There are moral religious people, amoral atheists, and everything in between. But addendums aside, religion is all too often used as a justification for bigotry, prejudice, and discrimination. Uh, the gender inequality was, was a weird thing because uh, 
I had a lot of very strong female role models in my life. And in order for you to go to heaven, I was taught that if I don't wear the hijab, then I will be held from my hair in hell. And this is protected by godly decree, shielded from criticism under the pretext of religious freedom. So people often ask me, why did you leave your own beliefs, your own religion, the religion of your parents? It's very simple. I'm a gay person and I should get beheaded? What kind of religion calls this? Religion is necessarily exclusive. If one set of beliefs is ultimately and unquestionably true, it often follows that those unlucky enough to have not been born into the in-group, or foolish enough not to have converted, are regarded with disdain at best and violent hatred at worst. As people who were part of, and then willingly chose to leave this community, atheist ex-Muslims are prime among those Islamically treated as subhuman. Your family is your family, and they love and care about you, but it's all based on your adherence to the religion. In which case, their deaths are not just called for, but celebrated. Islam makes all sorts of claims against non-Muslims, women, and LGBT individuals that are part of a reality in which individuals and governments alike use religious law and custom to strangle human rights and dignities. So, it intuitively follows that, in fact, one of the common motivations of leaving the faith is a concern for the tension between unquestioning belief in an ancient biased text and real issues of human rights. Ex-Muslims report feeling increasingly uncomfortable with the claims taught to them as fact about women, non-Muslims, and other minorities. In XMNA's apostate report, 35% of respondents cited conflict between Islam and human rights principles as the most important factor in their apostasy, more than any other factor. Almost 6 in 10 called this a contributing factor, and only 7% said it was not a factor.